A kingdom built in Japan becomes a dynasty, celebrated in New York on August 22, 2020. For almost 50 years, New Japan Pro Wrestling has remained on the throne as the king of sports. The message of Strong Style has not just been heard at home, but around the world, from Los Angeles to London, Philadelphia to Australia. Let's take a look back on only some of New Japan's most amazing overseas bouts. I'm Kevin Kelly, and this is The Recount. New Japan Pro Wrestling's international intentions started in the early 1980s with the establishment of the IWGP itself, the International Wrestling Grand Prix. Then in 2011, the IWGP Intercontinental Championship celebrated not just the world's best competing in Japan, but Japan's best competing overseas. May 2011, the Invasion Tour saw New Japan hit the east coast of the United States, highlighted by an eight-man tournament deciding who takes home the brand new title. On May 15, its two finalists faced off in Philadelphia. In one corner, the volatile sake spewer Toriano. In the other, a Florida native who had topped the American scene before realizing the toughest fights were in the cerulean blue, MVP. The American powerhouse was the decisive crowd favorite, gaining even more support after Yano's lowly strangulation attempt. Red Shoes refused to legally count the cover, and YTR found himself forced out of the running to be New Japan's first intercontinental champion by a submission put on at breakneck speed. Six years later, on the opposite coast, Another overseas title was being decided for the first time, the IWGP United States Championship. Underlining two nights of incredible competition was Tomohiro Ishii's hard-nosed pursuit of the American dream. His first round adversary was a begrudging one, as Tetsuya Naito had eyes for one title only. But that wouldn't stop this from being a fight to remember. Both Naito and the Stone Pitbull crafted their fighting styles around wearing down the neck and shoulders of their opponent for that final skull-crushing finish. One more conventionally than the other. Naito had plans to win the tournament and the red and gold only to, in his words, chuck it into the Pacific Ocean. But those plans were derailed in Long Beach, California. Although Ishii finished the tournament as the runner-up, his stubborn tenacity as a strong-style bruiser captivated an electric West Coast crowd and made one hell of a first impression for American audiences new to Japanese pro wrestling. I am going to whoop your ass and I will take that U.S. Championship. The IWGP U.S. Championship hosted one of its more emotionally charged bouts the following year at the G1 Special in San Francisco. Jay White returned from excursion a changed man dark and merciless, and hit the ground running by claiming the brand new title two months after his debut as the Switchblade. His quick success was in stark contrast to his challenger and former dojo roommate Juice Robinson, who had come close but ultimately fell short of the never open weight IWGP Intercontinental and United States Championships all within the previous year. And every time I get a chance, I do what I do best, and that's fucking lose, huh? Juice was desperate to show he had the substance to match his style. He may be silly, he may be flamboyant, but I'm a badass motherfucker too, depending on what day of the week it is. And here at the world-famous Cow Palace, had to test his medal against Switchblade Steel and do it all with one hand. After having his belt officially contested last month, White plunged even deeper into his dark side. Wait a minute! Switchblade Jay White just attacking Finley and Juice from behind! Get the f out of the way! That left hand is trapped in that chair! He'll break his hand right here! Oh, thank God he moved! Juice just punched the chair right into the face of Jay White! I'm no doctor. That's a broken metacarpal. I got 206 bones, mother what do you like to call it? The left hand of God. I'm going to crush it. I'm going to crush you. Juice's hand is already broken. No. Oh, my God. On the hand of Juice. Wow. 
Well, whatever wasn't broken in that hand is now. If Juice Robinson uses his cash as a weapon, he could be subject to disqualification upon referee's discretion. The setup for his finishing move was now off the table, but that didn't stop him from hurling the New Zealander right through one. Spitting venom all the while, White thrashed the flamboyant fighter headfirst into his surroundings, fans, and even the NJPW staff. He thrived off the hatred of the American fans and turned to aggravate Juice's broken hand yet again. After suffering low blows and every dirty trick in the book, the mangled Juice decided to fight for his survival. His experience and growth in Japan paved the way for Juice Robinson to win his first championship in America, and he immediately jumped in to celebrate with his home country. Another thrilling grudge match took over New Japan's second trip to the Walter Pyramid, Fighting Spirit Unleashed. Bullet Club was in the heat of a civil war. Skyrocketing egos were clashing for control. You did this! Gorillas of Destiny, Tangaloa, and founding member Tama Tonga lived by the original philosophy of Bullet Club. Soldiers who rejected any member who didn't embody the group-minded spirit of the club before all. Their targets that night were some of the more vocal offenders, the Young Bucks. The Californian brothers were IWGP heavyweight tag team champions and recently graduated heavyweights eager to make their mark against New Japan's franchise team. The titles, however, were the last thing on the Tongan brothers' minds that humid night in Long Beach. Their wrestling philosophies crashed as hard as their styles did. High-flying acrobatics and raw bursts of power echoed throughout the pyramid. Every big attack was deliberate and personal, with verbal gnawing always close behind. G.O.D. were taking no prisoners, introducing Matt Jackson's injured back to a wooden table. Oh my God! But the resourceful champions clawed their way back into competition as G.O.D. were tiring out. Just as the Young Bucks looked to shut the door on the revolution, even though their titles took a backseat to their mission, G.O.D. became Bullet Club record holders that night as its most successful heavyweight tag team. 2019 was a year that supercharged New Japan's global reach. The IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship was contested in Australia for the very first time in history in an astounding match that was as emotional as it was historic. Will Ospreay was slated to defend his IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship against a man he'd seen potential in years ago. Robbie Eagles tapped me out in Sydney, Australia, and I knew right then and there that Robbie Eagles needs to be here. So I grabbed this from my belt and I ripped it off and I said, there's an open invite, come to chaos. Robbie Eagles needs to be in Japan. Come to Japan, he did, but not to the side of chaos. Once. I heard from the Bullet Club that they wanted me. I knew that was the right decision. After their jaw-dropping best of the Super Junior 26 match was tainted by Bullet Club interference, Eagle's pathway to hold the highest junior heavyweight honor in front of his home country opened up. <laughs> Melbourne, Australia, renowned for its sports fanaticism, was all in on the Sniper of the Skies while the British-born Osprey adopted a black hat and a vicious style. Both men's games had evolved since their first independent meetings. Osprey was more muscular and powerful than ever before, while Eagles had supplemented his submissions background with a dynamic high-flying offense. This is incredible! Gold and history were at stake, alongside personal and national pride. With so much on the line, this match couldn't end with an asterisk. It's over, Robbie One, Eagles, dream. two, so it's impossible. What the hell? 
Well, we wondered, was El Fantasmo going to be the deciding factor in this match? It looks like he is. And to make himself he's a factor. Take his shot on Will Ospreay. But Eagles, he's got other ideas. Robbie Eagles stopping El Fantasmo from striking Will Ospreay. Fantasmo said it belongs to the club, what belongs to him is a kick in the teeth. By the end of the night, Melbourne rallied behind both wrestlers as a two-year journey came full circle. What a classic we have witnessed, Beagles. He's trying to piece together everything that happened during that match. What he lays out on Fantasmo! Oh my God! Osprey and Eagles, finally united against a common enemy, became New Japan's Birds of Prey. As far as Osprey's home country, the United Kingdom saw its first defense of the IWGP Heavyweight Championship on home soil for Royal Quest. The Copper Box Arena in London, England, once hosted the Olympics in the summer of 2012, and now a decade after its construction, opened its doors to the King of Sports in the summer of 2019. Minoru Suzuki was furious at his omission from G1 Climax 29, and forced his way to the front of the line to challenge a man he had matched in skill but eclipsed in cruelty, Kazuchiko Kata. His absence from the G1 meant Suzuki was especially fresh, and it showed violently. Rather than a straight-ahead title match, this looked to be an excuse for the Suzuki Goon leader to wreak havoc on the company who had shunned him by torturing their radiant champ. Although Okada was 2-0 in defenses against Suzuki, he knew victory meant standing up to his twisted wrath rather than trying to escape it. On that wild night in England, Okada crowned himself the king. While talking about overseas prestige, it's hard not to think about where Okada's fifth heavyweight reign began. Madison Square Garden, New York City, Widely considered to be the mecca of pro wrestling, MSG represented the peak of New Japan Pro Wrestling's international efforts to date, and the stakes were high in our main event. Emerging onto the stage before the energetic sold-out crowd strutted the seemingly untouchable Switchblade Jay White. Under him, Bullet Club had entered the cutthroat era, which included him snatching Okada's one-time friend and mentor, Gato and riding a rocket ship to the top by taking out Hiroshi Tanahashi for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship on his very first attempt. Die and the real IWGP Heavyweight Champion. White's dominance was no fluke, and neither was Okada's losing streak against him. The Rainmaker was coming off his second New Japan Cup tournament victory and hoped to repeat the ending of 2013 convert the cup championship into an IWGP heavyweight championship. Instead, what looked to be repeating was Jay White's commanding win over him at Wrestle Kingdom 13. Switchblade is in control, and the Rainmaker is in a lot of trouble. As the match progressed, Okada's confidence slowly built. Okada has something in mind. <laughs> Two for the price of one. Okada crushing Kido. And the switchblade! He knew he just had to endure the punishment to land the Rainmaker clean on white to seal the deal. Oh! Hook the leg! Oh! What? What? But cunning maneuvers and foresight have always been strengths for the switchblade. Tombstone! Tombstone! No! Blade Runner! Blade Runner! Blade and there's nothing in the tank for Jay White! He can't follow up! Both fighters' finishers astonishingly didn't cut it, and the title came down to which of the two exhausted warriors could go one step beyond their limit. <laughs> for the first time ever outside of Japan, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship had changed hands. As we see New Japan Pro Wrestling continuing to make history worldwide, records will become legacies and kingdoms will become dynasties. We hope you all join us for the ride. And visit NJPWWorld.com to see all of these exciting matches in full.